Hey, what's up guys? Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To. Hope you guys are doing well. And if you follow my channel, you know that we talk a lot about home labs, home lab servers, home lab projects, many cool and interesting things that you can do in the home lab and learning enterprise technologies, self-hosting, services, applications. However, many shy away from investing in a home lab due to the expense, and it's not the cheapest hobby to get into. However, today there are many options for home lab and many may struggle with the decision of, do I buy a home server? or do I look at the cloud? In this episode, I'm gonna give you guys my thoughts and opinions on running either a home server or using the cloud for a home lab environment. What are the pros? What are the cons of each? Which should you choose? Well, stick around guys, let's dive right in. First up, let's talk about a home server. And as you guys can see and know if you follow my channel, I am certainly a proponent of having physical servers and more than one physical server. What are the advantages of having your own home server to play around with? Well, in my opinion, it's just that. You have your physical server hardware, your physical networking hardware gear that you are able to get your hands on, troubleshoot, configure, provision, and you're able to wrap your head around your networking. You have to design your layer two VLANs, your routing topologies, all of those things, those core sets of skills that you develop by running your own physical home server and home lab environment. Those are just simply things that you cannot get your hands on and sometimes wrap your mind around if you jump straight into a cloud lab. And all of those things for me as well are just things that I enjoy. I like to physically plug in cables for networking. I like to configure the VLANs. I like to see how the traffic flows between virtual machines into the physical network. I think all of those things that you learn in the home lab environment bolster those skills as you move into the enterprise environment. And also for me, most organizations today are not completely cloud. So you have to have those core sets of skills still in the enterprise environment. However, there are certainly downsides to running your own home server or home lab environment. Those are electricity. Obviously, if you have gear powered on in your home, that is an expense that you have to foot. And I run my lab 24-7, 365, and I have several servers, several network switches, and all kinds of other gears. So it certainly makes an impact on your electric bill. Also, the cooling costs. I had to install a mini split unit in the room that I have my home lab environment in just to keep things cool in the summer months. The temperatures were just simply getting too warm. Uh, for the gear and for myself as well uh, coming into this room to not have active cooling. Also, there are downsides thinking about failures, equipment failures, uh, life cycle management. Also, having to uh, manage your gear from a perspective of once it gets outdated, once certain software doesn't work with it, you have to continually refresh that, that hardware in the home lab environment much as you would in an, a true enterprise environment. However, again, I feel strongly that a home server provides that really really excellent opportunity to learn those core concepts. It is a mixed bag as well though. When you think about the investment that you make for a home server, many look at the software as a service cost or the as you use it cost that many cloud environments offer and that is more appealing. However, if you are like me and run literally hundreds of virtual machines in your home lab environment, as well as containers and various resources, if you were to take that same footprint and move that into a public cloud environment, it would be ultra expensive and it would quickly add up and pay for a rack of lab gear after a short period of time. A great home lab resource that I would like to call out for you guys, and no doubt many of you have already seen reference and have probably visited before, is the Lab Gopher website. Lab Gopher is an excellent resource to be able to find inexpensive home servers that you can query eBay in real time and find the exact specs of a home server that you want to purchase. 
they make it extremely easy to simply move a slider across for the amount of memory that you want in a home server or the number of CPUs that you want to have configured in the server. And with a quick configuration at the top of the Lab Gopher page, you can easily see all of the listings that are available that fit the match that you have specified. And most are listed with of course, pictures that pull straight from eBay. So it's one of those catch 22 things that you have to really think about what are your objectives? How many resources do you want to run? Also, do you want those resources to run around the clock or is it going to be a lab environment that you want to spin up and spin down? For me, a lot of what I run, I want that to be available to me 24 seven because I never know when I'm going to need it or if I want to work with a particular technology, that is something I want to have available. And many technologies are difficult to spin up and down, especially if there are many components involved in that particular technology or application. So a physical home server for me is certainly worth it. I believe for my use case and for many others, when you reach the threshold of running many resources and wanting those resources available 24 seven, 365, it is actually cheaper to self-host those services on-prem in your home lab environment than using public cloud environment and public cloud infrastructure. As we've mentioned, home servers have their advantages, such as running services 24-7, 365, and if you run a certain number of workloads. However, if you want an environment that you can spin up, spin down, anytime you want to and that is accessible from anywhere and you want to play around with the latest and greatest technologies that public cloud providers offer then hosting your home lab in the cloud is an excellent way to do that and in fact the big public cloud providers amazon google azure they all have free tiers to their services give you a number of hours for free to run services and solutions and infrastructure out in their cloud environments totally free, no strings attached. There is one that I want to highlight that is offered by the market leader, Amazon AWS, the public cloud provider to beat. They actually offer a free tier for Amazon AWS and they throw at you free hours and free resources in their public cloud environment. And in fact, if you just simply Google Amazon AWS free tier, you will no doubt land on the page that I have displayed here. AWS free tier, uh, it offers 12 months for free. Now, this free tier has certain limitations. It is 12 months for free, and that includes 750 hours of EC2 instance runtime. And also you get uh, five gigabytes of Amazon S3 storage, 750 hours of Amazon RDS, their high performance database service, Amazon DynamoDB, 25 gigs, Amazon SageMaker, two months of service there, Lambda, 1 million, free requests per month, Redshift two months, Amazon Open Search, Amazon SNS one million publishes. It is a very generous free tier that you get with the free Amazon AWS public cloud environment. You can see there are some excellent resources, excellent opportunities to host your home lab environment in a public cloud solution such as this Amazon AWS free tier. And it's easy to get started. You simply Simply feed them an email address. I will say this, they do require, at least the last time I checked, they do require you to have a credit card on file. Now that can be a little bit scary. You can set up CloudWatch alerts and some other monitors if you're using the service so that you get notified if there are resource usages that are way above normal or if you have certain things that are going on, you can certainly alert on that. Now, one thing I want to call out, 750 hours of EC2 instance runtime might seem like a lot of runtime. However, as I mentioned earlier, if you're running, let's say 100 virtual machine, if you run those 100 virtual machines for one hour, you have run 100 hours of runtime in EC2 instance runtime. So as you can see, that would quickly, quickly eat that 750 hours of Amazon EC2 runtime. Keep that in mind as you're thinking about, should I 
purchase a home server or should I go into the cloud with a home lab environment? If you are simply going to run one, two, three, maybe four or five virtual machines, this could be a viable option. However, I'm going back to the quantity and the amount of time that you anticipate that you want to have those resources available. These free tier offers are very nice and good to get your feet wet with public cloud and even hosting a home lab environment. However, you can quickly burn through all of the free resources that are offered in this free tier solution. I want to mention a third option that we didn't introduce in the very outset, and that is a hybrid approach. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I think the best of both worlds in a home lab environment is to have both a home server as well as use public cloud infrastructure by means of this free tier for all of those resources that you want to have running 24 7 365 or you want multiple virtual machines that you can play around with in your home lab spin those up on a home server that maybe you purchase from somewhere like ebay or other resource then make use of those free tier solutions that public cloud providers like amazon aws are providing for enthusiasts or those that simply want to get their feet wet with their services it is a great way to have a realistic approach to what most enterprises are doing. They are taking that hybrid approach. On-prem infrastructure meets public cloud infrastructure and the workloads that make most sense to be run either place are ran in those respective environments. And workloads that make sense to run on-prem or in the cloud can be run in either location or the other. It's a great way to think about your home lab, not as an either or solution, but as a hybrid approach. Guys, this has been fun for me to just give you my thoughts on home server versus cloud and which maybe you would choose for which use case. I certainly think both hold value for home lab enthusiasts and those looking to get into a home lab environment. Keeping in mind both the pros and cons of each environment will help you in making your decision on which environment you're going to choose. Well again, I'm Brandon Lee. Please do like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys soon. Oh,